Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to a Tetragrammaton where we are playing Ur. This is turn three, um, and I'm the last one in because I was asleep. Sorry about that. So, we are jumping into the turn real quick. We have two battles. A battle in Gladewood and a battle in Tessaphon. First is with our army. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So... We've got our uh, forces just in a box, and then our Musushu on an attack rear. Um, and this is a decently scary little party of Wolf Tribe. As you can see, they have the little double daggers that I was talking about. This is pierce damage, so it does ignore some of your protection. Um, so it can get pretty fierce pretty quick. But realistically, not something like this is just... Kind of a boring battle, right? We're just going to run forward and the wave crashes. And pretty much every time we connect, we pop one of them. But there's three per square for them. So it's almost immediately like pop, 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 back. Pop, 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 back. Now you see this Inky's Chosen because it has 14 protection. Um, it is able to kind of like stave off and the, the regeneration. It's able to stave off some of the attacks. Fortunately... I think long enough for our Musushu to pop their leader, their shaman, and our chosen on the side does not die, which is good for us. Uh, if we had not had that attack rear command, we probably would have still won. But we would have taken far greater casualties, and we took pretty hefty casualties to begin with, honestly. So that's uh, something to worry about. We took six casualties in that battle, but they were all from Inkidu soldiers. None of our Chosen, or our Urguard, or our Masu. So that's pretty rough attrition. We don't want to do that a whole, whole bunch, but uh, we got to make moves. So, see how it goes. All right, then we have our battle here in Tessaphon, and this actually gets pretty close as well. So, if we start off, we're, we're going to watch them... Ah, far strike. Boom! It hit, so you'll see this little, like, black puff of smoke um, when far strike is being cast, and it hit and just crunched for 32 damage. Very nice. So we're just gonna speed up and look for that real quick. Ah, we missed over here. Popped another one. Well, it hit, but looks like we did very low damage. Ooh, another 32 Cruncherino. Okay, so now we're done with Far Strikes. Um, and this is actually kind of dangerous. These uh, Pegasus Riders do have a Lance Charge, right? And otherwise they hit decently hard. These Amazons don't hit very hard, but they do have a Dagger, right? So again, that's Penetrating Protection. Um, and we're regenerating a bunch, which is good... But it does get kind of close. Because you see all these fucking arrow hits just come in. Now that we're such close range, almost every single a shot is hitting. Um, and we get pretty low. But then we route the Pegasus Riders. Which is a very big deal. Because it's right at that point that the Amazons are coming in. And if you watch, once the Amazons come in, there's a couple moments right here where... Maybe not. Oh, there we go. There we go. Whew. We got Shocking Grasp off. That's what, that's what happened is this Crystal Sorceress. We've got... We had... We had something else tick for 19, and then we... Shocking Grasp for 24, and then we're, we're stunned... Right? And then all of a sudden, oh, 10, 10, 21. Oh, shit. It got real sketchy there for a second. Um, and then we kind of like right the ship and kill. And now we're pretty much good to go. Ooh, but that was pretty sketch. Um, pretty sketch. But we came away from it alive with another province. Good, good. Okay, so we had two unexpected events. 
We do have Misfortune too, so hopefully those are both good events. So in the Gladewood, playful winds have been captured, distilled into diamonds, and transported to your laboratory by your mages. Air gems plus five. That's pretty nice. That's pretty good for us, actually. And then an unexpected event in Ur. A runaway slave from the land of the Avites has appeared. He brings to your altar an item taken from the body of his former master. So we have the Inkidu slave uh, with a ring of the warrior. I think this actually is an event chain. I don't remember the specifics and uh, I'm having to do this. I'm trying to get this turn done so that everyone else can have another turn. Plus I'm trying to do it before work. So... Uh, I don't have time to look it up right now, but I plan to look it up and try to see uh, what's going on. Because I believe this is kind of like an event chain, and it'll, like, it'll... I think this happens between Ur and Hinnom. And I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. There's something up with this, more than, than it appears, if I remember. But we get an Enkidu in Slave Commander uh, with the Ring of the Warrior, which is... Oh, okay, sure. And that's it. So, what are we doing for the turn? Well, our Dominion expanded. Expanded very well, in a very exciting way. And now, so it's turn three. Now we make the the moves where this either becomes, could become like a very, a very strong game for us. Swinging out of the gate, very, very good. Or we make the turn that, uh, you know, we struggle bust it from here. Because we're moving into Perenna, which is an amazing province. Um, it's two away from our cap. It's also two away from Agartha's cap. It is entirely possible that Agartha will be moving into this province this turn with an army that can easily kill my god. It's also possible that he won't, right? It's possible that he won't be able to move into this province at all. Because he probably didn't expand on his first turn. Um, and he might not have been able to expand southward. The, he'd have to hit one of these two provinces, Bell or the Womb. He might not have wanted to ex expand into either of them th this turn. Which means he might not be ready to hit Perenna. And even if he is here, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to go there. Though I would. Right? So this is an incredibly ballsy move. This is a risky play. If we are successful, right, we take it. We might, it, it's possible that we just lose to the Cataphracts. We should end, but sometimes bad shit happens. Um, it's possible that we get our god killed here. But our god is immortal. Um, so he would come back in a couple turns. But, like I said, this is one of those, if we succeed, this could be really good. If we lose, it's the struggle bus. So, and that being said, so that's that's one thing that we're doing, is we're moving Nezar II into Perenna. Um, with Tessaphone Conquered, by the way, we did get uh, White Man Hill, which gives us one nature gems, 100 supplies, and increase in growth, which is kind of cool. Um, and we can recruit Crystal Sorceresses, which is nice. This is a pretty great path for us. Pretty excited about that. And getting some Pegasus Riders could be good in the long run. Pretty pretty interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. We were, uh, we're talking about Manasapada and his group. So we didn't get the Bindar's Mighty Marcadas. Um, Tirnanog is buying all of the Mercs. But we are moving Masanapada into Kun Aral right with his very depleted force and we are moving in um one of our Inkidu elders with a reinforcement back Ooh. sure he's set correctly so um this is hopefully going to be enough to deal with kunaral if it isn't, again, this could be one of those turns where it's like, oh, well, we fucked up. It's struggle bus from here on out, right? If it, if we do take Kunaral, that's going to be very good. If we take Pirena and Kunaral, um, that's over 200 additional income. That's going to shoot up our income, and it's going to be very nice for us. Um, that being said, we can see here there's a lot of heavies 
in Kron Kronberg. So we might not be able to move into Kronberg immediately. So we might have to move to somewhere like Simri. We might have to move into Fever Fens. But we've got options. We might move up into Simri and then move down into Scrawl Point or something like that. Try to carve out some territory away from Pangea. Who knows, right? Recruitment-wise, we are grabbing a Gala, another Musushu. We have the resources for a couple Inkies chosen now. Um, and we're filling it out with just... A Oh, and uh, in Tessaphon, we are recruiting a scout. Because we need a couple of scouts. We, we want to be able to see what's going on on the sides of our borders, right? We want to be able to know kind of how Argartha is doing, how Pangea is doing, how Fomoria is doing. We want to be able to know if Relay is trying to come on land, etc. We're going to try to try to focus on getting some scouts up in the beginning of the game. Not... A crazy amount, but we'll see how it goes. All right, anyways, I think that's pretty much the turn. We're still trying to research up into Alteration 1. And this is an incredibly risky play, an incredibly risky turn for us. We'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.